the Jews gathered round him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. <clears throat> Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you don't, do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are God's? If he called them God's, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Do not believe me unless I do what my Father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Again they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How long are you going to keep us guessing? If you're the Messiah, tell us straight out. That was the question the Jewish leaders said they wanted an answer to. Are you the Messiah? Because you certainly don't look like it. Now this is the only place in the Gospel that Jesus is asked this question directly. It's at a significant time, in a significant place, and of course it is a significant question. The time is significant because it is the Feast of Dedication, known as Hanukkah. It's still celebrated today, of course, usually round about Christmas time, and it commemorates the rededication of the temple, not the original one, not the one built by Solomon, but its replacement. One of the most important jobs of the Messiah, the Christ, was to restore the temple. So, you know, this is a significant time, the rededication of the temple. It's a significant place because it's in the temple and the question is significant because many Jews were waiting for the Messiah. 200 years or so previously, they thought the Messiah had come in the form of a man called Judas Maccabeus who rebuilt and rededicated the temple, but they were wrong. Judas Maccabeus didn't last long and the Romans conquered Jerusalem after a number of others in between. So some Jews were looking for this Messiah. It's important to note two things. First of all, that not all Jews believed the same thing about the Messiah. We'll look at that in a minute. And it's also important to note that when John, the Gospel writer, refers to the Jews, he is talking about the Jewish religious authorities 
not as it were everyday Jews. After all, Jesus was a Jew himself and all his followers at the time were Jewish. I say this because you can't use these texts to justify anti-Semitism, for example. And nor can people use these texts to say that Christians are against the Jews. It's simply not true because it's not what those texts are talking about. John is referring to the Jewish authorities, when, the religious authorities, when he says that. So, what was this Messiah going to be like? This one that a good number of the Jews were looking for. The one they said, you know, are you, are you him? Well, we can say a few things that were common to all the different beliefs about the Messiah. First of all, the Messiah was going to be a human being. He might be doing God's work, but he was not God. You see, there's a problem already building there, isn't there? <laughs> okay. He was a king. He would be a king, usually styled the king of the Jews. He would usher in a new age, an age of peace and prosperity. He would, of course, renew the temple. He would defeat Israel's enemies. And above all, he would be a success. You can't have a failed Messiah. That was one of the big problems with Judas Maccabeus. Also, it was going to be a huge problem on Good Friday because they thought everything had gone. So that's what the Jewish authorities had in mind when they asked Jesus the question, are you the Messiah? And there were huge problems with that. Jesus was from the wrong social class. He came from the wrong place. He was from up north, for goodness sake, right? <laughs> he had the wrong job. He ate with the wrong people. He championed the wrong causes and attracted the wrong kind of supporters. He even spoke, as I've indicated, with the wrong accent. Everything about Jesus of Nazareth was wrong. How could this odd job man from up north be God's Messiah? It was just unbelievable. How do you know that something on the face of it that looks unbelievable is actually true? Let's give it a try. I'm going to ask you a question. Please don't put the next slide up yet. <laughs> What's the strongest muscle in the body? Any suggestions? Good grief. The tongue, she says. She's right. How do I know? Well, I googled it, so it must be true. <laughs> now, look at this computer keyboard. There we are. What's the longest English word you can make from one line of that computer keyboard? I'll give you just a moment to think about it. There's a real irony here. That's the clue. Hello, that somebody knows. Chrissy? You're absolutely right. I, I, it's unbelievable. Typewriter. For those of you under 40, a typewriter is what we used before computers, right? So it comes between a quill pen and a computer. Amazing, isn't it? Unbelievable. How do I know that's true? That typewriter is the longest word? Will you spend a couple of hours trying to do anything better and you'll see what I mean? Typewriter, unbelievable. But what about Jesus? Look at these two pictures of Jesus. Which of those two pictures is the more believable? On the one hand, we have a probably tall, white, blonde man. 
The one that we see in most of our stained glass windows, if you look, and in all our Sunday school picture books. Or, on the other hand, a non-white, probably rather short, probably about five foot three or four, not particularly attractive bloke. Which is the more believable? This is, and, and, now I'm not going to ask you, David, I'm, it's the last person I would ask. Now, <laughs> which is the more believable? And this is the time to check your prejudice or your privilege at this point. Some years ago, the BBC carried out extensive research into men, pictures, bones, all kinds of things, DNA samples, um, into men from Palestine who lived in the first century. And the picture on the right is what they came up with. And so they're essentially saying that Jesus probably looked a bit like that. Now, when I shared that picture with the 95% black congregation of St. Michael and All Angels Stonebridge, which was where I was before I came down here, they were horrified. They said, that can't be true. They wanted a tall, white, handsome Messiah, and they weren't about to have their minds changed by the facts. And when the Jewish authorities asked, are you the Messiah? Jesus knew they would not believe him, even though they had enough evidence. They just would not be able to believe it. They'd already made up their minds that he could not possibly be the Messiah. These days, we are only too well aware of fake news and conspiracy theories. It's clear, for example, that the Russian people have a very different take or are being given a very different take on the war in Ukraine than what we're getting. And I believe there are still people who believe the earth is flat, despite all the evidence to the contrary. And I, unapo I apologise unreservedly if I've just offended anyone by saying that. What makes something or someone believable? Now, Jesus told the authorities not just to take his word for it. He told them to look at what he had done. But what he had done provoked many different responses. He just healed a man who was born blind so that the man could see again. Yet the authorities claimed that he had a demon. The people, some of the people responded by asking how such a good thing could be done by someone with a demon. There was always that mixed response even to something as wonderful as healing a blind man. The religious authorities even wanted to stone him for blasphemy because he claimed to be God. And as I've explained, that's another problem with Jesus being the Messiah, you see. The authorities were not about to believe in Jesus, no matter what the evidence was. Everything about him was wrong, even his good works. Jesus' argument from the Old Testament, a little bit in the middle of our passage there, which is quite difficult and obscure, fell on deaf ears. His request that they look at what he was doing cut no ice at all. So when they tried to seize him in order to stone him, Jesus managed to slip away from them and went back across the river Jordan to where his cousin John had been baptising. There, many people saw what he was doing and believed in him. 
So what made the difference between those who believed in Jesus and those who did not? What made Jesus the believable king? Now, I really want you to answer that for yourselves this morning. And in order to do so, I'm going to ask another question. I'm going to ask the question, why did you come to church this morning? I just want you to think about that. Why are you here? Why did you come? Now, you might answer, well, because it's Sunday. And that would certainly be part of my answer. It's what I do on a Sunday morning. I have very, very fond memories of my daughter when she was about six years old on a Saturday in the, in the supermarket queue in, in, in Dagenham where they grew up. It was a, an old Safeways, it's a Morrison's now. And she was just chatting to another child in, in, in the, the till queue. And she said to this child, and what will you be doing tomorrow after church? <laughs> Because the assumption, assumption was, rightly so, that on Sunday morning we went to church, right? So that's a legitimate reason for being here, and it certainly would be part of my answer. You might say that you've come to worship. You might say you've come to meet Jesus. Or that you've come to bring your needs and your prayers to him. And all those are pretty good reasons to come to church. But they are all the kinds of reasons that those religious authorities who did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah would give for being there in the temple at Hanukkah, at the Feast of Dedication. It was an important festival, so they couldn't miss it. They were there to worship God. They were there to present their needs and prayers and words of praise to God. And yet they were the people who did not believe Jesus. I'm looking out at exactly the same crowd who are here for the same reasons. But, and here's the difference, the Jewish authorities did not want to listen to Jesus' voice. They did not recognise that his voice was worth listening to. They did not acknowledge that they could be loved and cared for by Jesus. They were not, in a word, and it's the word that Jesus uses, they were not his sheep. They were not his sheep. Jesus seems to be saying that the key thing about believing in him, in Jesus, is wanting to know him as a friend, to relate to him, to hear and recognise his voice. And that's how John the Gospel writer uses the word believe throughout his Gospel. It means putting your trust in or having faith in. Now, I'm not saying you've got to sort of park your brain in the car park or leave it outside the door when you come to church. Of course, I'm not saying that. It doesn't mean that you've got to believe nonsense, but it does affect where you start from. If you're starting from a position of wanting to know Jesus, that's quite different from starting from a position of wanting to be convinced about him some, some way or other. Are you the Messiah? So the question I pose this morning is this one. Are you a friend of Jesus? Or do you want to be a friend of Jesus? He knows you. So do you want to know him? Do you want to hear his voice? If you do, you are safe in his hands and nothing can snatch you from him. 
you'll discover that Jesus is a completely believable king. Without a, God, without, a, without a doubt, God's Messiah King. Put your trust in him. Believe in him. Let's pray. Do you want to know Jesus? It's an important question. And it does make all the difference in the world. We've seen the Jewish authorities come to the temple to worship, to bring their needs to God, but they didn't want to know Jesus. We've come here to worship, come to bring our needs to God. Do we want to know Jesus? Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You are the believable king. Give us the desire to listen to your voice, to know you as our friend and saviour. Open our ears and our hearts to your word that we may walk with you and you with us one shepherd with many sheep we pray Lord that your Holy Spirit will open our ears and our hearts to hear and obey the voice of Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come together in this place to get to know you better and to love you better and to worship and praise you and give you thanks for all that you give us. We are blessed to be able to come together this morning. We are blessed to wake to a beautiful sunny day with the promise of warmth and of summer days. We are blessed to live in a free country where our opinions matter. We are blessed to be able to confess our faith freely and to spread your word. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings on us. Our mission partners are open doors who support our persecuted church. Lord, 5,898 Christians were murdered for their faith just last year. We pray that they continue to receive enough donations to make a difference. We ask, Lord, for your protection for those who are being persecuted and for those who are ministering in your name. And we think especially of the following, which are the top countries that are suffering the most currently. And we pray for Afghanistan, for the Christians in North Korea, Somalia, Libya, and the Yemen. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for all world leaders, that they would use their power wisely, that they would work for the common good and needs of their own countries. We pray for Ukraine. We ask that this war comes to an end soon and that Vladimir Putin finds a way 
to be able to change his heart. We give thanks for all those who have offered their homes across Europe, for those sending aid and for those raising funds. Lord, may your peace settle on this region. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give thanks for our Queen as she celebrates with us her 70-year reign. She has stood firm throughout her 70 years and has demonstrated her love for you, her Christian faith for all to see. We ask that you bless her and her family, especially this year. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray especially today for all who are facing further poverty as a result of this worldwide economic shortage in fuel and in food. And we think of Sri Lanka, whose president yesterday said they are facing bankruptcy. The entire country is facing bankruptcy and its people are desperate. We pray for Northeast India and Bangladesh as they suffer unprecedented floods and with the monsoon season, the monsoon season due soon. And we pray for all aid agencies that they are able to respond quickly. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we give thanks for those who have served us here at St. John's. We thank them for their ministry as they now step down today. We pray for our APCM and we pray for all those who are called to minister. We pray for our community here in Folkestone. Help us all to be active in our community and to show our love for you so that we can be a beacon of hope. We pray for all students and educators as the exam season gets underway, that students would give of their best and not let the effects of the pandemic on their education worry them. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we bring before you those who are suffering and those who are sad. In a moment of silence, please, let's name those people that are on our hearts. And we know need your comfort now. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Bertie, thank you so much for leading us in our prayers. And Ron, thank you for challenging us to believe in King Jesus. Can I invite the band to come back up, please? Um, and we're going to have our final hymn this morning, uh, which is In Christ Alone. And we're going to have our offering as well. Father, we thank you for these gifts that have been given to the life and work of your church here. We pray, Lord, that you would bless these monies given and those that are given in other ways, that we might extend the reach of your gospel, that Jesus might be honored. We pray that in his name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing in Christ alone.
Uh, as we come to the end of our service this morning. Uh, the first is that we have uh, over 70 people in this church in house groups. I think that's amazing. I'm really encouraged by that. Uh, and the house groups meet uh, twice a month. And then at the end of the month, we have our monthly prayer meeting where all the people in the house groups are invited, plus all of the church family. Um, we're calling the entire church to prayer this coming Wednesday. Please do join us for our monthly uh, prayer meeting. Come and respond uh, and pray with me. We're going to be seeking the Lord together. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. in the church hall for an hour of prayer this coming Wednesday. And many of you I know have never attended a prayer meeting. It would be really encouraging to see some of you come and join us because I've got to say that you're missing out on that really important time of fellowship together. Come and join us this coming Wednesday. Uh, a reminder that after the service this morning, starting at 11.30, um, we're going to be uh, having our APCM, our annual church meeting. Please do stick around for that. Um, I'd like to invite you all as well, a date for your diary, uh, Sunday the 3rd of July, come to my house and enjoy a barbecue in the garden. It's going to be great fun. Everybody's invited. Uh, come and join us uh, for that. So Sunday the 3rd of July, we're going to start at 12 o'clock, so do make a note of that um, and bring a chair with you. That would be really helpful unless you want to sit on the grass. Um, one final thing as well is that we're looking for people to help out. If you've got the gift of cleaning, if you think you might be able to help, 
clean the church, do please come forward, uh, either speak to myself or Becky, the administrator. Uh, We'd love to uh, point you in the direction of how to serve uh, in that way. And also, um, Jackie and Peter would like some additional people to help go on the rotor to serve refreshments. If you'd like to get to know people better, what better way than to give someone a cup of coffee, ask them their name, welcome them to church. Do please, if you'd like to, get involved in that way. Well, one final prayer uh, before we have some refreshments and enjoy some tea and coffee uh, together. Let's pray. May God, who gives patience and encouragement, give to each one of you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all, now and always. Amen. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please do help yourself to refreshments.